Hey everybody, welcome to Gatsby Conf 2021. This is Gatsby Gotchas, common pitfalls and how to avoid them. My name is Greg Hardy and I'm a senior software engineer on the customer success team. We do two things mainly, documentation and tech support for Gatsby Cloud. And we also run the Gatsby Concierge program where we help enterprise customers optimize their Gatsby sites. This talk covers three issues that you're likely to encounter if you do any amount of development with Gatsby. We'll address how do you identify these issues when they occur, what, you, what should you do to resolve them if they occur, and what do you need to know in order to prevent them from happening in the first place. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into the first example. Occasionally, we get reports from a user that not all of the pages in their Gatsby site were built or they're experiencing some other obscure and hard to reproduce bug. Oftentimes, this is a result of improper usage of asynchronous Gatsby node APIs. The one that you're most familiar with is create pages, where we typically do something like query data in the GraphQL layer, and then use that data to create some pages. I want to introduce a bug in this code, and I'll do that by getting rid of this return statement. And then I'm going to come down here to where I actually create the pages and log some information. So console.info, creating page for path. Path. Then I'm going to go down to the bottom of my create pages function, and I'm going to say console.info, done with create pages. Now that I have that, I'm going to run Gatsby develop. And then once that gets done building, I'm going to ensure that everything is working properly on my development site. So building development bundle. All right, we got some success. So I'll refresh this and check everything out. Everything seems to be navigating just fine. So you may be wondering, where is the bug? So let's take a closer look at our logs. Now, if we look here, it says success building schema. Right after that, we have our info done with create pages. And then we have some other logs that say creating page for path. That's odd. How did we get done with create pages before creating our pages? Well, take a look at this warning. It says action create page was called outside of its expected asynchronous lifecycle create pages. And ensure that you return a promise from create pages and are awaiting any asynchronous method invocation. This is just Gatsby trying to warn you that, hey, you did something asynchronous or it looks like you're doing something asynchronous. Make sure that you do these things. Now, it's necessary to return a promise and await a, any asynchronous code because, as you can tell by these logs, if you don't do that, the Gatsby build process will continue on before any of that asynchronous code is finished. And that can be problematic. Now, in our case, we didn't see anything wrong on the front end. However, imagine if you were creating hundreds of pages or hundreds of thousands of pages. One of the things that you could see is that you ship the site and all of the pages are not built. And that's something that we want to avoid. So the way that you do that is by making sure you return a promise, either explicitly by using this promise object and the return statement that we originally had there, or you can do it implicitly using async await syntax. Now, the latter is actually what we recommend. So I'm going to actually take all of this code and refactor it to async await using a little bit of snippet magic. So with that, if we come back up here, we can see now that we have async here and we're awaiting the GraphQL request. Now, I changed Gatsby node, so I need to restart my development server. And once that finishes, oh, we've already done the create pages step. Now we can see that our asynchronous code is, ex is executed in the correct order. So now we can be pretty confident that all of our pages are going to get built. There's one other area where we can get trip, tripped up here, and that comes when we're trying to do an async request for each item in array. So we're going to go down here and simulate an async function called do uh, asynchronous work. And all this does is return a promise after two seconds with a name. Before we create each of the pages, we're going to uh, execute this function. So we want the callback in our async to be 
to we want the callback in our for each to be async and then we're going to say let name equal do async work now we'll take that name and plug it into our context but we have an issue here we're using for each and when we run a for each loop it doesn't actually store the results it throws it away immediately and so that means that this async task here is not actually being awaited and besides that we didn't even have the await word there we want to make sure we don't forget that so instead of using the for each we want to use the map function because the map function will return an array of values and since this is an async function it's going to return an array of promises and we can await those promises to make sure that the Gatsby build process doesn't continue on so I'll just call this uh, post.map uh, created pages and then we can go down after this and say await promise dot all created pages and that'll keep us from making the same mistake that we did initially when we weren't using multiple async requests so just remember if you need to iterate over a list and make api calls to use the map function and do a promise dot all so you can await all of those promises in this next example we'll take a look at an issue that comes up often when sourcing content from say like a cms over here i have a contentful content model for a blog post it has all the fields we typically care about but i've also added this is featured field and it's a boolean and it's also optional what i want to do is take this field and source it so that i can say which of my blog posts are featured now on the left i have the blog post template that is used to generate the blog post and i'll just start sourcing that information now so i have const is featured equals get props data dot contentful blog posts and so that's going to oh, i also need is featured here and that's going to extract that value from the props and then i'll come down here to publish date and conditionally render something based on that value so is featured and we'll just have featured post that will get rendered next to the date if it is featured and down here in my page query i will make sure i source that field and as soon as i say this you see we get this error now what does that error say it says cannot query field is featured on type contentful blog post and what this means is that gatsby tried to find the field that you requested however it wasn't there it doesn't exist for some reason but we just looked at our content model and we know for a fact that we have it defined so what's wrong here well we'll take a closer look at the blog post entry itself and if we scroll down to the bottom we can see we have the is featured field but it's not bubbled in and so that is the problem when you haven't filled out a field in your content entry most of the time the api request to source that content is not actually going to include that field and so we can confirm that by coming over here to postman and sending a request for our entries now if i search this request for its feature you see we get no results so none of the items that were returned from the api request to the contentful space actually had that entry and that is the problem that gatsby is having now when you source content gatsby tries to make an educated guess about the shape of your content however if the content doesn't have information in it it can't make a guess about it and so in the case of this this uh is featured field gatsby can't make an educated guess now there's one way that we can resolve that in the cms and that is to make sure that all of our content entry um, all of our content entries have uh, the fields that we care about filled in and so if i select yes here publish those changes kill the dev server then restart it again that'll actually get rid of the error but there's an even better way to resolve this issue and we'll take a look at that after we confirm that this right here actually works if i go back to postman we can see uh, if i run that request again we've got one of one on is featured and that's that one that we bubbled in is true and if we go back to localhost we can see that our page is rendering just fine 
and we've got that uh, featured post thing loaded there. Now, um, I want to bring that error back by clearing this out and publishing those changes. And then I'm going to go over to Gatsby node and show you how you can tell Gatsby um, what the shape of your data is ahead of time. There's a Gatsby node API called create schema customization. And this function will take in the actions object. And from that actions object, we are going to destructure the create types function. So we'll use that create types function to create some type defs. And these type defs are written in GraphQL SDL or schema definition language. And we won't get into the details, but we use the keyword type to define a type. In this case, we care about contentful blog posts because that's what we aired out on. And this implements a node type, which comes from Gatsby. And we have the is featured field, which is of type Boolean. Now we don't have to define the entire type for contentful blog post. We can define the parts that we want and then let Gatsby infer the rest, or we can define the whole thing and tell Gatsby explicitly not to infer it. We won't get into that now. So we just need to pass the type depths that we have into the create types function. And that will create our types for us. So we'll save Gatsby node, kill Gatsby develop, then run it again. And if we come back over here to our site, we'll just navigate back home. And after that loads up, we'll see that we don't have the, the feature post marking here because we removed it from the CMS, but we're also not getting the error. And so this is the better way to resolve that type does or field does not exist on type error that we originally saw. For our last example, we'll take a look at HTML build failures. Now, there's a lot of reasons why a build failure might occur. However, one of the most common ones is when we try and use browser APIs. So what we'll do is come over here and just below our blog post title, we'll actually render the path for the blog post. And we can do that by entering a div here, and then we'll just say document dot url now when we save that we get it right here and this works just fine in develop however when it comes time to build the site this will fail and i previously ran a gatsby build and to show you what that error looks like it says reference error document is not defined now the problem is is that when we build the gatsby site we do what's called server side rendering and on the server side of things there is no browser and so apis like document window intersection observer they don't exist and so we need to protect against those things and the question is how do we do that and then even better how can we prevent these errors or catch them before we go to ship our site so in order to catch it we'll go over to gatsby config and we'll enable a, enable a feature that was recently released and it's called dev ssr and we can enable that by specifying flags in our exports from gatsby config now dev SSR is set to true. That'll enable it for us. We save Gatsby node, so we need to restart the development server. And then we'll switch back over to our original terminal. And once the development bundle is ready for us, we can go to our blog post and we'll get a warning about the error that we made. And so the exact same error that we saw when we did the Gatsby build is now presented to us here, but it's during development. And so we can correct it ahead of time. So document is not defined. How do we protect against this error? Well, what we need to do is perform a check ahead of time uh, to see if a browser API is defined. And so we can do that by saying const should render equals undefined not double equals type of window. And just to be extra explicit about what we're doing here, we'll say if window is not undefined, then we'll return true. 
otherwise will return false. And so we can come down here and conditionally render this div by saying should render and and save that. Refresh this page and like magic, that error has gone away. While conditional rendering works just fine, we actually have another option, and that is to use the component did mount lifecycle for class components or use state and use effect for function components to reference our browser APIs only during those, only when the component has actually been mounted in the DOM. And so I, I have a function component, so I'm going to import use state and use effect from React. And it will come down here and we'll say const blog URL and set blog URL is equal to use state, which has an, an addition an initial condition of an empty string. Just below that, I'll call use effect, which takes in a callback. And this callback is going to set my blog url to document dot url and then i need to specify the dependency for blog url now this setup here does effectively the same thing as our condition here so we can get rid of that now and then we'll go down to here and get rid of the conditional check and then instead of referencing document.url, we will now reference blog URL. And when we save that, our bundle built just fine. And we didn't have that error that we had before come back up. All right, everybody, that concludes our Gatsby gotchas examples. If you still have Gatsby questions, you can always log on to gatsbyjs.com and check out our open source documentation. If you have an issue that requires more investigation, be sure to check out the Gatsby GitHub repo and look for issues related to yours or file a new one if need be. And if you're a Gatsby Cloud user, you can always get help from directly in your Gatsby Cloud account by clicking help and taking a look at the Gatsby Cloud specific documentation or contacting support directly via our chat widget. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.